In today's episode of the Pathmark Presents podcast, I got a very interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Jordan Pritt, and he is hailing over from the folks over at Life School. Um, and uh, we already have another interview here on the podcast with uh, the Life School. So we want to extend a little bit and go in more depth um, from you know questions uh, that we got. So basically, today we want to deep dive into brand a little bit. We're talking with Jordan, who's a brand marketing manager at Life School. And um, actually, he's very versatile with the, the world of podcasting himself as well. So... John, welcome to the show. Yeah, Lucas, thanks for having me on, man. Um, this is kind of uh, this is a little a little bit different for me. Normally, I'm in uh, in your seat interviewing somebody else, so um, been really happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Um, I am for the like folks who are talking to marketers. I, I'm I'm kind of a little new to this relative to probably some of you. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I worked in schools up till about. Um, April of last year. And most of the last spring, I was kind of doing double duty. And then I made the jump to uh, to marketing from there. I was actually, I was a science teacher for a long time. And then I was a school administrator for the last several years. Um, but really love working with live school and um, really happy to be here today. Thanks for having me. Very cool. Now, um, maybe tell people first a little bit about live school. What is live school all about in your own words? Yeah, so we're an ed tech company. We provide behavior management software for K through 12 schools, um, and not really just K through 12 schools. Uh, really, all sorts of schools. So we have all sorts of case uh, case studies where it works just about anywhere where you where you have teachers and kids working together. Um, what what it does essentially, it's software you use in classes, but it's also an app that you can use all over your campus and. What you're looking for is like good behavior out of your kids when they, when they're doing something right, you recognize them for it. And our software lets you keep track of those those interactions and give the kids points, and then hopefully you use those points to reward your kids on you know weekly, um, annually, semester wide basis, however you want to do it. But that's the goal. And really, what we're trying to do is we want to improve the culture in your in your school community, really for everyone. That and that includes teachers and administrators as well as kids. Very cool. That gets a very clear overview. Now, um, tell us maybe a bit about the the main users. Like, who is who is leveraging the platform? Who's actually then using it in the end? And you know what? What's sort of the you know the problems maybe they want to solve by uh, leveraging the solution? So there's some levels to this. Well, <clears throat> like I said, because it's a it's a classroom management tool, but you sort of have to know how schools operate to understand all the all the use cases. So. Like from a school leadership perspective, you have consistency in all your classrooms because you can go from classroom to classroom and they're using the same tool to encourage good behavior and to motivate their kids. So that's that's a positive for principals. If you're talking to teachers, now their lessons are running smoother because they have this tool that they can use to encourage students and they're keep, they can keep track of things that otherwise, uh, prior to our, our tool, if they're using something else, a lot of times they would have had like a little ticket system maybe because a lot of folks were trying to do something like this in their classes because you know they see the need to motivate kids. Like it's, that's not new. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was very like, um, I guess I guess you'd say it's analog. Like the, the teacher would have to print off tickets. They have to keep track of them. How many did I give out? Are these kids trading tickets? All that kind of stuff. Um, we make it digital. We make it to where they can do it just by a push of a button and then they can do their whole class at once if they want. And not only that, it also benefits students and parents. Well, for one, I, the benefits are kind of obvious for the kid because of the motivation involved in their classes. They're going to do better in school. They're going to have higher attendance, all those things. On the parent perspective, you're looking at weekly reports telling you how good how good your little kiddo is doing. And you can mm-hmm. see, oh, they, they, they were they, they were being leaders in, cl- in these classes. In these classes, they are... You know, they're they're falling asleep in these classes. What's going on there? They can they get their weekly report. And they can see these kind of things. So it it's there's levels to who benefits there, and it's like depending on who you're talking to, the motivation is a little different. But uh, so we hopefully that's why we like to say we benefit the whole school community. Very cool. Now um, maybe tell us a little bit about the journey, right? Um, when and do how do people you know learn about you guys? What's the journey that they're going through? So traditionally speaking, and um, most of our, our our customers have come through word of mouth, which is, is a really good sign because that, that means the folks that are, are using live school, they, they, they tell their colleagues uh, at the next town over, that kind of thing. Um, more and more. So that's that's been our, our main channel for a long time. And you know that, that works here. And hey, you should try this. More and more, we're getting more organic search. So we've made a great strides in SEO in the last uh, last year or so. Um, that's one of the things I was doing was, was I, I'm a big contributor to our blog. I edit our blog and I find 
um, educators to write other pieces for our blog. So all, all of our content is, uh, is sourced from educators. So like when they're, when they're finding resources for behavior management, school culture, those kind of things, we want to be one of the first ones popping up. So that, that helps us a lot as far as SEO goes. Um, we all, we've had, a, had a whole lot of success through email outreach. Um, and what we're doing is we're sharing the resources we're creating with, with, with educators all over the country. And we, and we get a lot of conversions that way. Um, and then you know, our, our social channels are growing and that's, that's another part of the, of the, the brand side of it is, is building those socials for us. Um, those we started mostly from, from scratch about a year ago, we've, we've made a lot of strides and we're trying to create, um, this position where we are providing value that is outside of software value for folks that come to our social channels. So we're, we're trying to help them with the pain points they find in schools all day, every day, and, you know, hopefully have a little bit of, uh, the education humor they run into too. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, now, how do you personally think about the website? Because I mean, you're coming from a brand angle, right? Like maybe, maybe first help people a little, little bit about, um, help people a little bit more on, um, you know, what does brand mean for you in this sense? Like what, what does the role encompass and how do you sort of translate it sort of into the website and, and other things? Like what is sort of the pieces that, you know, make brand work tick? So that, that's a great question. And I don't know exactly if this would, would work for everyone mm -hmm. um, in like in every industry, but for us, brand means, you know, identifying the, the pain points your customers have and then providing them value and being a leader in that space. So like, like our, our, our blog is not, it's not a blog about how to use live school. It's a blog about how to run schools and it is um, and PBIS, which is positive behavior and invention and support. It is uh, behavior management. It's school culture. It's classroom management. It's things that you, that would bring value to folks, whether or not they're using live school or not. And that's what, that's what we're trying to provide with the brand is we're trying to, we're trying to build ourselves a little bit of authority in the space. Um, and we're making great strides in that. And mostly because we have a lot of educators on the team and most of our content is sourced from other educators. So to, to me, that that's what brand is. It's building trust with our, with our customer base. It's building value. That's not just software or related to them. Um, so when they do have those needs, we're, we're already kind of the leader in the space for them. Okay. Very cool. Now, um, Let's basically um, deep dive a little bit more on that, right? So, um, for you as a marketer, right? Because you mentioned you're new to you new to the space in a way of brand marketing, particular, relatively new. Um, where and how did you educate yourself? Like, what were your go-to resources? How did you, you know, find content, people that were, you know, helping you that you found helpful in that regard? Because we have a lot of people listening in that are either long-term marketers taking a new tangent, a new role. I'm just curious, you know, how you sort of, you know, went about that. So when, when I was navigating the space, there, there's a lot of things that it, it's, there's, um, I don't, I don't, I, like I said, I don't know if it's this way in every field, but I did find there's tons of great uh, resources in marketing. And um, my, my, my colleague Anna shared a bunch of those with me early and you know, LinkedIn has been a great tool for us. Uh, as far as me catching me up to speed on things, but I, I'm a big podcast fan. Like, like you, I, I have a podcast, you have a podcast. I like listening to them most of the time while, when I'm working, if it's not, if I'm not writing. Um, so I'll listen to things like the, like the marketing millennials podcast. And um, I, I follow a couple newsletters, the email newsletters that I think are, are really, really valuable um, that I, I get on a weekly basis. And like, I, I, I don't know if everybody reads them. I read them because I, I found value in them. So I, I, I would, I would suggest doing that if, if, if you're new. Very cool. Um, now, a couple of rapid fire questions to wrap it up for the day, John. Are you ready for those? Sure. What is the last book that you read? The last book I read, um, I read a lot and sometimes I forget like what they're called. Oh, I, well, I'll tell you what I'm reading right now. It is, um, I'm, I'm kind of a sci-fi fan. It's um, I know, like, you know, the movie Starship Troopers. Okay. You've heard that? There's I've an heard, old, yeah. there's an old book. Uh, that it, it's semi based on. That's what I'm reading currently. I like sci-fi books a lot. So, <laughs> cool. And um, what's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? What we're focused on the most, uh, school culture, and trying to help schools. Uh, you know, as they as they get past pandemic, how, how do we make school better for everyone? That, that's that's we want we want to be part of that solution. Mm -hmm. If there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be the one single thing that you would fix for your role as a marketer today? No boundaries with technology. 
I, I bet you get this one a lot. It would be attribution. Hmm. Um, I, I bet a lot of people say something like that. Um, but for, for me, because part of my my role is is our socials, I would like to like to see is you know how, what impact did our TikTok have on on someone? What impact did Instagram have on someone? Because sometimes that's not easily trackable. Um, like they may they may come through and they but they've also got a, an email from us, and that's what finally got them to convert. But I, I'm curious, did they, you know did, did they see ten TikToks before they did that or not? You know that kind of thing. So that would be that would be kind of my pie in the sky wish. I would like to see the whole journey if, and and find a better way to do that. And, and how, I mean, tell us maybe a little bit more about this because you're right. It has been coming up on the show actually a lot, like more and more marketers are yeah. turning to that. Maybe, maybe guide us a little bit to that because, you know, we're getting also a lot of questions from marketers that are not in tune yet, but that they're, they're wondering like, you know, why do these folks on the show care so much about it? Maybe tell us maybe what you personally think is the core problem and, you know, what are things that, you know, people can and should do and to tackle it or where's the gap of what's not possible in your perspective, right? Everybody has a different perspective on it. I'm curious. Well, it, part of it is kind of the the benefits of technology and communication. We've we've all gotten better at uh, communicating things, and like we were using all these different channels. Um, all those channels aren't the kind of channels you go to when you're buying something, though. Um, it may be ones you're using for entertainment. It may be ones you're using um, for research. You know, it might you know, you, and I, you might just be scrolling on Twitter and that kind of thing. I'm all those things don't like lead to conversions immediately normally. Um, so like, for, for instance, like just, just take just some of my responsibilities. Like I have I, in, in any, any given week, I'll post a blog post, I'll record a podcast, I'll film like five TikToks and I'll make, you know, two or three posts on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, like, and then I know I'm reaching slightly different audiences each time. Mm -hmm. And a lot, I think a lot of folks are probably seeing this too, but I'm curious, like what's the, you know, how much overlap is there? How much was this, um, something was shared and finally they, they, at the end of the day, when they get the case study through the email, they say, "Oh, I've 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 seen all these other things." That's that's the thing. That's what makes it hard because it's a lot of channels. Um, there's a lot of different ways to reach people, and they're all great, and a lot of them are really fun to do, and and they have a lot of a lot of value. But sometimes it's um, it, it's it's hard to say. All right, this podcast led to this. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For sure, 100. And like, what would be sort of that magic solution looking like? Like, what would be if you, um, you know, what is it that uh, marketers like you need, right? When it comes to attribution, what do you need to to see? How does it look like? In in some regards, I don't I don't know if if that is totally possible because it's there's mm -hmm. just there's so much um, interactions online that it would be tough to know understand that. Um, we're doing a better job of that. Um, that's, that's kind of a focus of us is when, when we're working on somebody through the sales cycle and, and they're, they're, they're close to the finish line, we're trying to figure out, you know, what was the last touch point, you know, what, what, what brought them there. So that's, that, that's, what, that's, that's kind of a focus for us going, going forward is, you know, what, 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 what was the, what was the piece of content that helped get you here? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Very interesting topic. And it's definitely very, very uh, much in focus from a lot of people that we listen uh, here to on the show. Um, next question. Um, if we do a little bit of time travel, and I think your journey as a marketer is quite interesting, right? So if we, as you were mentioning, you were working in schools, if we were going back to Eastern Kentucky University, right? You're heading out of formal education. Um, actually, we can go back even Western. Uh, <laughs> you actually went from uh, West to East there. Um, yeah. you from Western uh, to Western first. You're heading out of formal education into your you know career which was in education um schools and then marketing like what would be the one advice that you would give yourself for your journey or that uh, there's a lot of things that i, I wouldn't change at all because just because it, it created um for me now it created a lot of industry knowledge that i wouldn't have got otherwise mm -hmm. um so like i've got i understand the workings of schools i understand the pain points those kind of things so a lot of that was just things that needed to happen for me to get where i'm at mm -hmm. um but if i could go back in time to like that piece i would say that do a little bit better job investigating different career paths because they're probably not what you they're, they're probably capable of doing way more things than you think you are in those paths so like if i was you know 21 and i was at western i probably would have thought Marketing was mostly, um, you know, ads on TV or, you know, ads in the newspaper. That, that's probably what I, I knew of it at the time. Cause like, like I was, I was a science major and I was going, I was going to teach science and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really something I knew that much about at the time. Um, but and fast forward to now and I've, I'm, 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 I've got a podcast, a blog and I'm running all these social channels. It's things I would have never dreamed of at the time. So I would like to, you know, talk to myself at 21 and say, you know, investigate different career paths 
mm-hmm. there's more to it than you think there is. Um, and the, the, the possibilities are, are really endless in all sorts of career paths, specifically, specifically marketing. Uh, there's, there's so much we could do. And it, it's a lot of it's really fun to do too. Very cool. Um, John, really appreciate you joining us today for the Pathfinder Presents podcast. I want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed about life school, what's the one thing I think people should remember? Uh, the one thing they should remember um, is that if you are in the ed tech space, make sure you are communicating regularly with you know teachers and administrators. And if you got a chance to hire some teachers, administrators, because they understand how that space works. And that goes for other I know other spaces too. If you can get somebody with industry knowledge, I think it's helpful. Um, and I would also like to say, if you are working with schools in any capacity, whether or not you are in the schools or you're a technology company supporting schools, I think you probably like our podcast too, The Flywheel Effect. So you can find that on Spotify and Apple. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Popping Presents. Thank you, sir.